Whatever stage you are in your career, you should take meeting notes at work, meeting notes for yourself that will help you recall what was discussed, what decisions were made, and walk out with a clear list of action items that you are responsible for. There's nothing worse than walking out of a meeting and having no idea as to what was discussed or what you were supposed to do. And it doesn't look professional if you have to go to your coworker and ask them for their meeting notes to find out what everyone was talking about. So in this video, I'm going to share with you a really simple way to take notes at your next next work meeting so you can feel on top of what is going on. Before we get into the main content, let's address the issue of handwritten versus digital notes. Now, both options work, but they have their pros and cons. So let's look at those now. For handwritten notes, the pros of handwritten notes are that they help you to comprehend and retain information better. They help you become more active in the meeting rather than passive. It removes the physical barriers that could prevent you from connecting or contributing at your optimal level. The cons of handwritten notes are that they are time consuming. Sometimes people speak quickly, ideas fly around. You might not have time to write everything down that you need to. They can also be difficult to share with others. If coworkers need your notes, you'd have to type them up and share them via a Word document or email. Personally, I prefer handwritten notes and that's the method that I tend to use during the meetings that I attend. But you might be more of a digital note-taking person. So let's look at the pros and cons of digital note-taking. For digital note-taking, the pros are that they help you to collect information faster during meetings. You're less likely to miss important points. They help you store information for your digital records. So if you need to record meeting notes digitally, this method will help you do that. They help you share notes with others. So if you need to take notes for the team during a meeting, then this is a better method to use. The cons of digital note taking is that the computer or iPad that you use can create a physical barrier between you and others in the meeting. It can prevent you from contributing because you don't feel included enough in the conversation. And the company might not allow you to use your software of choice. So personally, I'm an Obsidian user for my notes, but not all companies will allow you to use third-party software like Obsidian. At the end of the day, you need to find a method that is effective for you, a method that helps you achieve the purpose of your note taking and one that your company policy allows for as well. Let's look at the method you can use to take notes for meetings at work. Now, this method is really simple to use and it can be adapted whether you are taking notes by hand or digitally. It is based on this template, which has four sections and we'll go into those four sections in a moment. Now, at the top of the page, I have three things written, the date of the meeting, the purpose of the meeting and who the meeting is with. These three things are pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to go into them in any more detail, but underneath we have the four areas which you will be filling in with your meeting notes. So we'll go into those four areas right now. The first section is at the top left of the page and this is for general notes. This can include what topics are being discussed, the key points people make, questions others ask, ideas or opinions people have or challenges that people put forth. It's basically the content that is being discussed. So what people are talking about in that meeting. Ideally, you don't want to write everything down. You couldn't possibly write everything that everyone says in the meeting down, but you do want to note the key things that people say and in a summarized way. The second section is at the top right of the page, and this is for questions and contributions, specifically questions that came to you as you were listening to other people talk during the meeting or ideas that you want to put forth that came to you as you were listening to the other people talk in the meeting. Basically, they're talking points that were triggered by something that someone else has said in that meeting. The thing with meetings is that you need to respect other people's talking space. And as people talk, you might have a question or an idea that comes to mind, but you don't necessarily want to interrupt their flow of thought, but you don't want to forget what you want to say, right? So I recommend that you write it down as you think of what you want to say during the meeting, write it down on this template for your meeting notes so that you can loop back to it later once that person has finished speaking. Another way you could use this space is before the meeting. If you've thought of a question or an idea that you would like to ask during the meeting, you can print out this template before the meeting and write it down to record what you want to ask so you don't forget it 
once the meeting happens. The third section is at the bottom left of the page and this is for decisions made, meaning decisions that have been made during the meeting. It's important for you to record decisions that have been made because quite often this is the purpose of the meeting to make decisions on things and decisions will affect the whole team, including you. So you need to remember and be clear on what these decisions are. This will help you to keep on top of developments inside your team, with clients or inside your company so you can do your job better. The fourth section is at the bottom right of the page and this is for action items, specifically action items that you are responsible for once the meeting has finished. These might be related to decisions that have been made, questions or contributions that you have made or general discussions during the meeting. Basically, there are things that you need to research, do or follow up on after the meeting. Action items help you to leave the meeting in an organized way so that you are clear on what you need to do next. Now that we've gone through the four sections in this template, let's look at an example of how to use it. Let's say I attended a team meeting. At the top of the page, I would write the date of the meeting, September 14th, 2023. The purpose of the meeting client updates, who attended, Jack, Jill, Polly, and Alice. On the top left, I would write general notes for the meeting. And this could include Jack and Jill visited three prospective clients and signed two new clients. New clients are Bucket Enterprises and Pale Limited. We start work for these clients on October 14th, 2023. Be ready for crunch time. On the top right, this is where I would write my questions or my contributions. So as the meeting progressed and as people discussed the items and the key points, these are the questions and contributions that came to mind. How long will this client engagement last? What are we expected to do? Who will be working on this project? So on the bottom left, I record the decisions that were made. Now, these were the decisions that we all discussed during the meeting. So it was decided that I would be working with Jill and Polly as a team on marketing research for Bucket Enterprises. We need a market research report by December 31st, 2023. It was also decided that Jack and Alice will complete their preliminary meeting with the company on September 30th. On the bottom right, I would write the action items that I am responsible for. And this is organize a meeting with Jill and Polly to discuss the market research project for our client. With this method, I am clear on what was discussed during the meeting, what decisions were made during the meeting and what my action items are after the meeting. This helps me to contribute to the team at my optimal level and to help ensure that my contribution is helping to move projects forward. Let me know what you think about this method for taking notes during meetings. Do you use something similar? Do you use something a little bit different? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful for your next work meeting. If you did like it, please hit the like button below. Subscribe to my channel as well for more content like this to help you in your leadership journey in the future. Now, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can make sure that you don't miss the future videos that I release so that you're notified every week when I release a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.